Do you remember the very first moment you became aware of the world around you? The first sound you heard, the first sensation you felt? Try to picture it, an elusive memory, long forgotten. Most of us can't recall the exact moment we first experienced consciousness. It's as if we woke up one day into existence, not knowing where we were or how we got there. But that moment, whenever it happened, was the beginning of something extraordinary. It was the start of you. Your thoughts, your feelings, your awareness of being alive. Now let's take a step back. Before that moment, your body was already functioning, your heart was beating, your lungs were breathing and your brain was active. But what about your mind? What about the awareness that makes you, you? Was it there all along, waiting to emerge? Or did it come into being suddenly like a light switched on? These questions strike at the very heart of what consciousness is, a phenomenon so familiar and yet so mysterious that even the greatest minds of our time struggle to define it. Scientists tell us that consciousness arises from the brain. Billions of neurons fire in intricate patterns, forming what we experience as thoughts, emotions and sensations. But how do these electrical signals create the richness of being? How does the taste of chocolate, the sound of a loved one's voice, or the awe of staring at the stars come from a web of neurons? This question is so profound that philosophers call it the hard problem of consciousness. It's not just about what the brain does. It's about how and why those processes lead to something as intangible and personal as experience. Think about it for a moment. Everything you've ever experienced, every color, sound and feeling has happened inside your mind. You've never directly experienced the world as it is. Instead, your brain constructs a version of reality based on the information it receives from your senses. In a way, your reality is a simulation, one created entirely within your mind. But if that's true, then what's really out there? Is there a world beyond your perceptions, or is your experience all that exists? This question leads us to a fascinating idea. What if consciousness isn't something your brain creates, but something it accesses? Imagine your brain as a radio, tuning into a universal signal of awareness. Some ancient philosophies and modern theories suggest that consciousness might be a fundamental property of the universe, like space or time. If that's true, then your individual consciousness isn't just confined to your brain, it's part of something much greater. Have you ever wondered why you can't remember the years before your earliest memory? Were you conscious during those years? Or does consciousness require memory to exist? Some scientists believe that memory and consciousness are deeply intertwined. Without memory, you couldn't form a sense of self. But what if consciousness exists independently of memory? Could you be aware without having any recollection of who you are? And if so, what does that mean for your sense of identity? Let's expand this idea even further. Imagine a world without consciousness, a universe of stars and planets, oceans and mountains, but no living beings to experience it. What would that universe be like? Would it even exist in the way we understand it? In quantum mechanics, particles behave differently when they're observed. This has led some scientists to speculate that consciousness might play a fundamental role in shaping reality itself. Could it be that the universe needs conscious beings to bring it into existence? And what about other forms of consciousness? We often think of humans as the pinnacle of self-awareness, but is that really true? Dolphins recognize themselves in mirrors, Elephants mourn their dead, and crows use tools to solve puzzles. 
These behaviors suggest a level of intelligence and perhaps even self-awareness. But what about plants? They don't have brains, yet they respond to their environment in ways that seem almost deliberate. They communicate through chemical signals, share resources with their neighbors, and even warn others of danger. Could this be a form of consciousness, or is it something entirely different? Here's where it gets even stranger. What if everything in the universe has some level of consciousness? This is the theory of panpsychism, which suggests that consciousness isn't just something humans and animals have. It's a fundamental feature of reality. In this view, even atoms and particles might possess a tiny spark of awareness. Your coffee cup might not be thinking about its existence, but it could have a sliver of something we can't yet define. It sounds absurd, but if we don't fully understand consciousness, how can we say where it begins or where it ends? Now, think about your own mind. It's made up of billions of neurons, and none of them are conscious on their own. But when they work together, they create the rich, complex experience of your thoughts and emotions. Could the universe work the same way? Could every piece of awareness in the cosmos come together to form a universal mind? If so, then maybe we're not just individuals. Maybe we're all fragments of a greater whole, connected in ways we can't yet comprehend. This idea of a universal mind raises another question. Could artificial intelligence ever become conscious? Machines are becoming more advanced every day, capable of solving complex problems, recognizing patterns, and even mimicking human behavior. But does AI truly know it exists? Does it feel anything? Most scientists would say no. But what if consciousness isn't tied to biology? Could a machine, given enough complexity, one day achieve self-awareness? And if it did, how would we know? Would it think like us, or would it experience reality in a completely different way? If AI could achieve consciousness, would it be limited by its programming, or could it evolve in ways we can't predict? Imagine a machine that becomes aware not just of its functions, but of its existence. Would it develop emotions? Would it create art, dream, or ponder its place in the universe? And here's a chilling question. If a machine were conscious, would we recognize it as alive, or would we dismiss its awareness as mere code? This brings us to another profound mystery, the relationship between consciousness and death. If consciousness is tied to the brain, then it should end when the brain ceases to function. But near-death experiences challenge this idea. People who have been clinically dead often report vivid memories, sensations of peace, and encounters with loved ones. Are these experiences just hallucinations, or could they be evidence that consciousness transcends the body? Some scientists propose that consciousness might exist beyond the brain, like a signal that continues even after the receiver is gone. And if consciousness can exist without the brain, where does it come from? Did it emerge with life on Earth, or has it always been here? Some theories suggest that consciousness is woven into the very fabric of the universe. If that's true, then every thought you have, every moment of awareness, is part of something much larger, a cosmic consciousness that has no beginning and no end. Consider this. When you look at the stars, you're seeing light that has traveled for millions of years to reach your eyes. In that moment, you're not just observing the universe. You're part of it. Your awareness is the universe reflecting on itself, searching for meaning in its vast, infinite expanse. What if that's the ultimate purpose of consciousness, to allow the universe to know itself?
As we explore these questions, one thing becomes clear. Consciousness is not just a scientific puzzle. It's a gateway to understanding existence itself. Why are we here? What does it mean to be alive? And what role do we play in the unfolding story of the cosmos? Perhaps the answers will never be found, but the act of asking these questions is what makes us truly human.